Hi, I'm George, and we'll make this panorama by first going up here to File, come down to New Panorama, and right here you can select your images. Left-hand side, click on Add. Now in here, I have a bunch of pictures I took, and a few of these actually make up a panorama. It starts right here. I'll hold the Control key down, and I'll just select all of those images. It's those five pictures, and those make up the panorama. And then just choose Open. If you want to make this on your own, I'll have those five images where you can download those from my website. Okay, we have that done. All set to go. If you want to remove anything, just uncheck it right here. But we know we want to have all five of these. Now to make it into the panorama, the first step, click on Stitch Panorama. And then Affinity Photo is going to combine these into the basic panorama. At that point, we'll have some additional options for our choices. But this gives us our basic one. There we go. You see it's a nice panorama, it's nicely stitched together. The blank areas out here with this darker blue, those are the areas where there's no picture information. We'll take care of that in the next step. But at this point, that looks pretty good. Now, you can have more than one panorama in here. Affinity Photo will figure it out and it will give you several panoramas down here depending upon what it finds over here as far as overlapping images. Now to make this thing really work well, you want to take your images so that there's a good overlap between each picture. If you can have your camera on a tripod, that's even better. Make it as smooth as possible. Try not to move your camera at all while you're taking your picture so that there's no blurring in there. All those things can make it more difficult for the panorama to be created. This was all handheld, but I was very careful about where I held the camera. Because even here, left hand couple of pictures, I had the image too high. And it was better or more consistent over here on the right hand side. Okay, so we have our good panorama done. Go ahead, choose OK. And it then builds the panorama. You can see right here, it's put them together. It's now finding the best parts. It's doing the merge. And there we go. There's that real nice looking panorama. Now at this point, we're still inside of the panorama tool. We haven't left that yet. On the right hand side, you can see some basic information about the pictures in here that were taken. Now to fill in these empty spaces across the top, down across the bottom, left hand side over here, a little bit on that edge. Go up here and just check that button right there. This is the in paint missing areas button. Click on that. That's all you have to do, and now Affinity Photo will fill those in for you as soon as we go over here and hit the Apply button. We'll go ahead and do that. And here we go. It's going to then render out that panorama and fill in those missing spots for you. Once that's done, if you want to, you can crop in a little bit. There we go. And that looks pretty good. It's not perfect. These spots over here, right-hand side, that looks great. The top looks absolutely perfect. Left-hand side looks nice. Right down here is kind of weird. You can see what happened. It grabbed a little bit of this from over here. It grabbed this stuff from up here. We need to fix all of that to make this really work out well. So that's going to require a little bit of clone stamping. And we'll do the best we can on that to kind of hide this. Luckily, it's just kind of a random area with some bushes. So I think we'll be okay on that. Aside from that, though, everything is fine. Now, if you wanted to, you could crop in. If I cropped in on the bottom down there, I could lose a lot of that without having to do the clone stamp tool. But we'll try to keep as much of this picture as possible. So let's go over here to the magnifier. We'll zoom in on that bottom left-hand corner. We'll see what we have to work with down here. Not too bad. Okay, here's a little fence thing here. It's repeated right there. We need to fix this and this bit here and this bit in here. We have some dirt to work with, some plants up here. If I scroll to the right-hand side, there are some more plants over here. We can use some of this stuff. And we'll just come in and just patch in that and put in a lot of plants in there to hide this section. That should work out okay. So I'll grab the clone stamp tool, and that's right here. See, there's a clone stamp size. You can go larger or smaller on that if you want to. That's a pretty good size. Let's just scroll over here to the right-hand side. Now to clone from, hold the Alt key down and choose a spot to clone from. I'll choose right here. There you go. I chose my spot. And then come over here, and you can see that's what you're cloning from. Kind of see it in the brush right there. And then just click and begin painting over. I'm just going to do one real fast pass here and get rid of all that stuff. If it looks good, great. If not, we'll come back and do a little touch-up on that. But I think that's pretty good. Okay, a little odd there. But I'm going to go ahead and finish this up anyway. Okay, not bad. Now let's grab in some more stuff. I'll grab some stuff from right here and bring that in a little bit. And then some stuff right here and bring this. I'm just kind of randomizing it a bit so it's a bit random. And putting in just a few things just to help to give us a nice look on that. A few little spots here, and I think that's pretty good. I think no one's really going to spot that. There we go. So that takes care of that bottom section. If we scroll over here to the right-hand side, let's just double-check this. We had some stuff right down here. I see a little bit of an edge right there. Everything else looks fine. Let's go ahead. We'll fix that. I'm just going to grab from right here. 
Alt and click, and then just clone stamp just like that to clean that up. Okay, clone stamping is done. We'll just zoom back to fit on screen. I'll just go up here to view, and we'll come down to zoom, and zoom to width. There we are. At this point, again, you can crop if you want to, and the crop tool is right up here, easy to use. But let's go ahead and come in here and work a little bit with our values and colors and so forth. And for that, let's switch over here to the develop persona. There we go. And on the right hand side, you can adjust your exposure. You can do enhancement, you can do white balance. Let's first come down here where it says shadows and highlights. And we'll start off with this. I want a little bit more contrast. And for that, I want to have the darks a little darker and the lights, the highlights a little brighter. So I'll take the shadows and I'll move this to the left a little bit and see how that looks. Go a little bit further. About there looks pretty good. You can go real specific in here with this button right there. But I think about 47, 46 looks nice for the shadows. Now if you check this on and off here, you can kind of see before and after. That's before and that's after. That helps. Okay, a bit brighter on the highlights. I'll try about halfway again. It seemed to work on the bottom. I'll go about the same for the top. And let's do a off and on on that. Okay, that adds in a bit more contrast. I think that helps the picture a lot. I still think we can do a bit more with this, so I'm going to bring the saturation up just a bit, maybe about 25% and see how that looks. There we go, 25%. And again, let's uncheck and recheck Enhance. That's before, that's after. That's nice. It kind of brightens up the buildings right back in there. Now we're towards the late afternoon. You can tell by the shadows in here, getting kind of long. There's a real long shadow right there. So we could go a bit warmer on the picture. So for that, let's go up here to Tones and onto Curves right there. And on this one, I'll set this at red. Now my picture is in RGB or red, green, blue. So my options over here are red, green, and blue. So we'll use the red. I'm just gonna take my mid-tones in here. I'm gonna pull them up a little bit and just increase the amounts of the reds in there just a touch. Just pull it up just a little bit like that. And I think that's probably good. Let's check that, there's before and there's after. It just adds in just a bit more red, makes it look a little bit more like we're getting more towards sunset. If you're happy with your settings, go up here and click on develop. It then sets those into the picture right now. It's doing those adjustments. And there we go, that's taken care of. And that puts us back into the standard affinity photo persona right here. Now I recommend saving this. So I come down here to file and save. This is going to automatically save this as an affinity photo image. This is the same folder that I have my panorama pictures in, so I'll save it right here. That's just fine. And I'll call it panorama, okay, and choose save. So it's now saved as an affinity photo image in case I want to go back and do more work on it. It's always a good idea to save it as the affinity photo. I can then do all kinds of adjustments in the program. Now, of course, you want to also have this saved out in a way that you can actually use it, and depending upon your use, will determine how you want to save this out. And for that, Let's go up here to the Export Persona. There we go. And on the right-hand side, you'll find your Export Options over here. Right now, it's at PNG. This I wanted to save this out as a JPEG image, best quality. Let's click on that. There's best quality JPEG. And a few more options. And if you want to make adjustments, such as your file format right here again, you can choose RGB, grayscale, or convert to a CMYK image, embed your profile, just some basic stuff. But we'll leave it at just the default settings in here. And then go up to the file menu, come down to export, and then just hit export again. You can change things right here if you want to, but I think everything is already set to go. So export. Again, it saves it back out to the same location where I brought in the images originally. There they are. I'll choose save. And there we go. We've now saved it first as the affinity photo image and then exported that out as a JPEG. And there you go.